three, two, one. <laughs> 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 Alright guys, JP Smith here, the backup flyer for the Lions currently with former Springbok legend of the game, not you Sanele. <laughs> Coach Morne currently coaching us here at, um, at the Lions on the other side um, and then we've got Sanele. We're going to talk a bit of all things rugby, go, go a bit into schoolboy rugby. Coach, Coach Longdrop is going to talk a bit about his playing career over in, in France and Sanele is going to talk, talk a bit about the size in rugby. <laughs> so let's start. Coach, you, you're currently busy, obviously, with us and then we're um, How are you finding that the transition of the rugby? No, it's good. I finished last year, so it's great to immediately go into a, a rugby job, stay in the rugby things. Yeah. Make it so much easier for me. I think if you're out of rugby and you have nothing to do with rugby, then it's getting yeah. difficult. But yeah, it's great working with the guys and staying in rugby and working with the school boys at Gaasfontein and I, help a couple of guys outside as well. I guess I guess I, I watched the other uh, probably a few months ago last year actually the the the, the, the schoolboy rugby and the amount it's changed to professionalism. I, th I think some of the schools in Cape Town I don't know up here has got um, dietitians, personal trainers. Obviously DHS DHS didn't have that. Well, we yeah. have, we, so, we, we do have oxygen chambers now. Yeah, I do. <laughs> yeah. so, so tell us a bit about your time, because obviously when you were still at school, playing SA schools, coach was playing for the box, is that correct? When yeah. did you finish? 2017. Yeah. yeah. When did you? I started 2009 for the box, I started 2003 for the Bulls. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. So, see, what's the fish? Yeah. It's a long time. So let's talk about your school days, not yeah. my school days. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, my school days, I was, uh, it was really fun. I played all types of sports um, until I was about 16 years old. Um, that's when uh, I probably met someone who, who sort of almost molded my, my rugby career. Um, my coach at the time was Scott Matthew. Um, he's up in, in, in the US now, he's coaching there in the MRL. Um, I think he's one guy who sort of molded um, what I wanted to do. Um, he was very influential in my life when he came, um, when he retired and, and he came to a school and he was also a DHS old boy as well. So I think uh, he's the guy that sort of almost pushed me to the mm -hmm. rugby side of things, yeah. So Lily, just a twofold question for you. Obviously you, you're playing 10 this weekend, um, but switching between 10 and 9 all the time, is that a massive difference? And Coachy, how much has Coach Mornay, obviously you can see it with our games, the kicking game has improved immensely. Even a forwards yeah, started yeah. now. That's why, yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> like I said, you play what you see. Yeah, yeah Andrew, um, I think there's not much difference. I think uh, the background as well, schoolboy rugby at school, I, I, I did dabble a bit at um, 9 and 10 for shock schools as well, and SA schools that dabble at 9 and 10. I think that background sort of helps as well. Um, with Coach Morris, more than anything, it's just um, what he just, he tries to, to, not to change how I play, but like just give me tips here and there what to look for, especially when you're playing at 10. Um, the vision that you have as compared to the, to 9, because at 9 you're so, yeah. so close to the breakdown and stuff like that, but at 10 you're a little bit back, so yeah. it's just, triggers to look forward to find space, whether it's running space or kicking space, so not changing anything more than just helping to find triggers and finding the right space and taking the right space at the right time. I guess and, and in defence is it a massive adjustment? <laughs> yeah, I do tackle a lot. Obviously so, yeah. I see you as a speed bump, but it's not. <laughs> 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 100% tackle rate. Like. Yeah, like yeah. last week, um, you know, I got 100% zero out of zero. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you you take them back, yeah. just put them on the floor. 100%. Guys, Moraz, just for you, being on the other side, obviously you've got a massive history with the Bulls and one of the legends there. How, is it emotional for you, being on the other side in a good way, bad way, different? I'm enjoying every day at the Lions. Mm. Um, everyone's moaning about the driving here, but for me, in traffic, I'm driving half an hour to Loftus as well. Yeah. And I'm driving 40 minutes, 45 minutes here. So now for me, I, it's, yeah, I, I enjoy every day at the Lions. I, I was at the Bulls for more than 20 years or 20 years. But yeah, I had the opportunity. The Lions gave me the opportunity. I'm, and I'm grateful to be here and just do my best where I can. 
Yeah, and luckily we, you, you probably gave a lot of input on the kicking game, and obviously because not not a lot has changed over the past two years that the Bulls has played. Obviously, a bit of extra personnel and stuff, but do you see at this basically the same structure they play, the same game plan they have as always? Yeah, I think over the last couple of I would say five to ten years, the Bulls haven't changed a lot. Yeah, they are a kicking team, and the, the, the more accurate the kicks are, the better the game is. If the kicks are not accurate. Um, the game plan is not going to work, and mm. I think over the years the games that they that they lost was because the key game wasn't on form. The nine or ten wasn't yeah. on form. So but for us, nine, nine and tens, it's always if the, yeah. if, you, if, the if the team play play bad, it's the nine yeah. and ten or the ten we had a bad day. But it's like they say, there's a saying that we know what's coming. We just have to stop them. Yeah. So I think that would be the same this weekend. And touching a bit on your career over uh, in France, you went over 2013. I was there for six years at Stade Francais in Paris, and yeah, I had a great, a great time there. I had to change a little bit, a lot of like uh, breakies and yeah. stuff. <laughs> but yeah, it was a good time. I learned a lot of the game as well. Game changed yeah. a bit there with the weather and the, and the field, the wet, the wet field. So I had to adapt a little bit in my, is my it, game. Is it, is it obviously because that that was still Super Rugby then, and when you left and. Is it, is it a, what's the difference? Is it the, obviously I th people say Super Rugby is a bit faster, and now you are see obviously a bit faster. France is a bit more physical. Is it? Well, how did you how did you find it? Yeah, I find it like that in the beginning, but over the years the French rugby is just getting better. Yeah, and better. Yeah. You can you can just see all the all the guys is going over, the Fijians, the Samoans, the New Zealanders. Everyone's going there. So so the rugby yeah. is getting better. It's getting faster. It's not just the heavy guys running around. There is some big guys yeah. there, but it, I think the guy, the game is, is getting a bit faster there as well. Yeah, we w I watched the other game, uh, I think it was Bordeaux against Saracens. French rugby is healthy, eh? Yeah. It's very healthy. And um, so Nelly, for you, um, what the size in rugby, let's talk a bit about the size in rugby. You've ob obviously, all jokes aside, you've been on the smaller side of of things in your career, <laughs> especially, especially at fly-off. Obviously, you get a lot of direction in that channel. Um, how do you find that? Do you just... Obviously, you back yourself and that sort of thing, but... Yeah, 100%, I think, um, um, without shying away, um, rugby is a physical game. Um, you are going to get into collisions, but um, uh, with the help of coaches um, from grassroots level, um, learning how to tackle, you know, um, most of the time, science has to prevail mm. sometimes, um, in terms, instead of trying to <laughs> make a, a big hit, um, but it's more for me personally, is, is getting low, get my technique right, and, and, and just taking the boys down, you know, you can't run without your ankles, and another thing, you can't, you can't gym your ankles, yeah. I promise you that. <laughs> you yeah, tried it. <laughs> <laughs> and just, just a, a question in general for both of you, obviously the South African derbies is much more I would say emotionally you get more emotional about it um, how do you how did you used to coach uh, uh, what's the word generate that um, energy and keep keep it did, did you did you accept it as being a more emotional game or um, did you try and push it aside and just that's another game for you as well Sonale? yeah for me it wasn't a I didn't make a big I was quite relaxed and chill yeah. before a game like as you were coaching as well um, so I wasn't as emotional as some of the guys, but for me, yeah, it's if you if the Lions play against the Bulls, the Lions don't need any any motivation or whatever to play against yeah. the Bulls. They know it's going to be physical. They want to beat them. It's the XK Derby. Mm. If the Bulls play against the Stormers, we all know it's you don't have to coaches don't have to say anything. So inside yourself, you know how you can get yourself up for a game and. and and that 80 yeah. minutes on the game, it's all, all, all that counts. And there's no no secret the, the, the Lions have signed you maybe for a little late appearance in the, <laughs> in the season. <laughs> Is there something you That's can tell us? I keep on kicking with them yeah. and stay fit, you never you know. You never know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So Nelly and cricket, you said you were, you, we spoke earlier about a bit of cricket. Who do you support in the... Uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm conflicted between two teams. Um, obviously, coming from the from the Eastern Cape, you know, the Sunrisers is probably a team that's up there. But been here for quite a while now, so I'm, I'm a JSK boy. And you played cricket at school as well. Yeah, I uh, got an opportunity actually to go to Durban High School for cricket. Um, got an opportunity to. to um, to play cricket there and they had to pay for my studies to play cricket, but somewhere along the line things changed there. Um, but and you yeah. <laughs> cricket as well? I played a bit of cricket, but yeah. because there wasn't anyone else, so I, I played a bit of cricket. <laughs> what's, your, what's your history? Where did you, Pretoria or no, no, born? I was I born in Cape Town. Okay. I moved to Bloemfontein, my old primary, secondary school there, and 
started playing rugby there, played Graham Week for the Cheetahs, oh, yeah. 11 and 12, and then came over after school to, okay. to Victoria. I want to talk a bit about, obviously, you trying to follow Coach Mornais. Obviously, are we, there's rumours, there's a statue getting built at Loftus. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, have, have you heard anything about that? Nothing. Yeah. Nothing. <laughs> yeah, they, by the main entrance, apparently there's one coming up of Coach Moray's thing. We'll check. Yeah. <laughs> so, Lele, you're trying to get one year already, eh? Just be patient. Yeah, no, 100%. Uh, just another 20 more years. Yeah. yeah. They, yeah. But they, you, they don't need a lot of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you signed a lifetime deal here at the Lions, didn't you? It's <laughs> <laughs> news to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, that's so, news to um, me. No, I always say, coach, and I live by it. Play what you see. Yeah. Play what you see. You saw if, the game. if it's on, it's on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, all good. Thank you, guys. Thanks for for being being here. Um, let's hope for it goes our way this weekend. But we know what's coming. Thanks, coachy. Thanks, shorty. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Kevin Holt from Wish, eh? <laughs> <laughs>